A cool front is moving south through Texas beginning today. It's going to fire off one heck of a ruckus going into tonight in the land of thunderstorms. Let's talk about who may be dealing with flash flooding and severe weather in this Tuesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. <laughs> Hello, it's Tuesday, the 23rd of September, 2025. Apparently, you get one glimpse of that visual and it just disappears. Good to know. Put that on the to-do list. We are looking at the opportunity of cooler weather over the next several days. But first, we have to get through the chance of severe storms flooding. And, oh yeah, it's still hotter than the Dickens across the state today and for some of you tomorrow. But some slightly less hot air is definitely on the way. Now, let's start with the severe weather outlook. This is going to be for this afternoon, tonight, through Thursday morning from the Storm Prediction Center. Now, you can see we are going to have a cold front moving south through the northern third of Texas heading into the afternoon and evening. That's going to help spark off scattered thunderstorms. Some of those storms are going to be capable of producing hail, a uh, large hail could have hail larger than the size of golf balls out of the most intense storms. Not all of them. Localized damaging wind gusts over 70 miles per hour. A tornado can't be ruled out along the Red River and, and in northeast Texas especially. And I'm also concerned about the threat of flooding and flash flooding across northeast Texas and eastern north Texas and the Arklatex hanging into tonight and to tomorrow morning. Some of the latest data is starting to show some rain totals getting over 5 inches, which would definitely cause some flooding issues, street flooding, quick rises on creeks and streams. Pointing the onset time of this around 5 p.m., that's when we could start seeing isolated storms fire up during daytime heating, but the most numerous storms are going to be later this evening and overnight, ironically, as I'm trying to, you know, fly into one of the Dallas airports, so go figure, right? All right, let's take a look at the high-rise rapid refresh model, and this is going to show you the expectations. Again, you can see isolated storms start firing up near that cool front. Late this afternoon, 5, 6 p.m., from the big country, North Texas, Northeast Texas, those will generally move off in an easterly direction. After about 7 to 8 p.m., you can see storm coverage is going to increase rather substantially as we see upper-level lift increase, and generally speaking, all the ingredients just come into better alignment. So we're going to have a lot of storms overnight into or in the Wednesday morning, excuse me, across northeast Texas, north Texas, Texoma. Hanging into the morning hours Wednesday, you can see as that cool front moves southeast, a pretty good area of rain and storms are going to fire up west Texas, the Permian Basin, the big country. Those will move southeast in conjunction with the cool front across the hill country, north Texas, central Texas, northeast Texas, and east Texas. Some of those storms could be strong to maybe severe with some hail, strong wind gusts, a lot of lightning, and heavy rain. Uh, you can see we are expecting that line of storms to kind of re-intensify hanging into tomorrow afternoon as it moves across parts of the Brazos Valley, south central Texas, southeast Texas, the Golden Triangle before it begins moving down to the coastal bend, and off the middle and upper Texas Gulf Coast down to the Gulf heading into Thursday morning. So, here... Here is the severe weather outlook for Wednesday afternoon and evening across the southeastern half of Texas. We do have the possibility of isolated severe storms capable of producing large hail and localized damaging wind gusts in addition to heavy rain and cloud-to-ground lightning. Not looking at much of a tornado threat, and again, most storms are going to be moving at a decent enough clip to hopefully prevent any sort of significant widespread flash flooding. So... We'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, guess what? Lightning is frightening, and when thunder roars, it's best to get your keister indoors. So let's keep that in mind. Here's the wildfire danger over the next few days from the Texas A&M Forest Service. Generally low to moderate fire danger, but that does not mean we're not dealing with issues. We had a couple hundred acres burn yesterday uh, east of Baird. That's out in the big country, western north Texas, east of Abilene, with the heat wave fire adeptly named, by the way. Good job to whoever did that. Uh, so, we'll have to watch for that, but we are expecting less active 
fire issues with the change in weather and rain chances. The Atlantic Basin is uh, pretty active right now. Hurricane Gabrielle now a Category 4 hurricane. Max sustained winds 140 miles an hour. It's moving northeast uh, away from the United States, away from Bermuda. However, in its wake, two systems with a medium to high probability of becoming, well, named systems over the next seven days, uh, moving west-northwest, and there is a chance they could try to get a little close to the eastern United States at times. Those are definitely going to cause issues in terms of uh, rip currents, increased tides, and price of coastal flooding. Depending on how close they get to the United States, there could be some more issues than that. We'll have to see, but uh, we'll be watching those with interest. Absolutely zero issues or influence on our weather here in Texas or the Gulf. All right, let's take a look at the European uh, precipitation outlook uh, or output hanging over the next five to seven days. After Thursday, you can see this model keeps things pretty dry across the eastern 75% of Texas as we see uh, a drier air mass filter in from the north. The exception is going to be across the western third of Texas and the Guadalupe Mounds, the Trans-Pecos, Big Bend, the Davis Mounds, and the borderland around El Paso. Y'all are still going to have moisture. Y'all are still going to have precipitation chances. Uh, so, well, a late season monsoon continuing for y'all. But everyone else, after Thursday, we are looking less precipitous. So the weekend's not looking bad in terms of rain chances. Now, here's the forecast rain totals over the next five days from the Weather Prediction Center. Again, please don't get nitpicky on exactly where the heaviest rains are drawn here. Uh, it Look, Mama Nature's going to do what Mama Nature's going to do, and at the end of the day, where the heaviest rains fall are simply going to depend on where the storms actually fire up and move. So, at this point, you can see we have seen an uptick in those rain totals, especially across parts of east and northeast Texas, for tonight into tomorrow morning. Some folks may get over five inches of rain very locally, but we're definitely seeing an uptick now with some folks in northeast Texas, east Texas, southeast Texas, down through parts of south central Texas, getting one to three inches of rain. Some folks could get higher. And some of y'all in those areas I just mentioned may struggle to get much more than a tenth of an inch of rain. Otherwise, also looking at the potential for locally upwards of an inch of rain on the Permian Basin, Big Country, Concho Valley, Hill Country, South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley, and the Rio Grande Plains, generally about one quarter to three quarters of an inch of rain over the next five days. Borderland, far west Texas, same story. Panhandle, eh, you're looking drier now. Uh, you may see a little bit of rain tonight into tomorrow morning, but uh, most of your precipitation occurred last night and overnight. So y'all look to be the driest areas in the state, along with parts of northwest Texas. High temperatures today, well, guess what? Outside of where we've already had the cool front move through, Panhandle, west Texas, where highs will be in the 70s and 80s, everyone else, it's going to be hot. Upper nine, mid to upper 90s to triple digits, hot. 101 in San Antonio, 100 in Abilene, 96 in DFW, 100 in Austin, 102 in Laredo, 99 McAllen, 92 in Houston, 89 in Jasper and Beaumont, 93 in Texarkana. Tomorrow, northwestern half of the state behind that cool front highs, mid to upper 70s to lower 80s. Southeastern half of the state still going to be in that toasty environment. 90s with another day of triple digits across South Texas. On Thursday, highs across the state, mostly in the 80s with a few lower 90s down in the Rio Grande Plains, Rio Grande Valley. On Friday, we start to warm back up, getting near 90 degrees again across parts of the Panhandle, West Texas, big country. Lower 90s down in the Rio Grande Plains, South Central Texas, the Rio Grande Valley, and the Trans-Pecos. On Saturday, same story, starting to see mid-90s return down south. We're having low 90s Central Texas into South Central Texas, up into the big country, probably parts of Southeast Texas as well. So, you know... It's not a crashy the cold front situation where we're going from 90 degrees to 40, but, well, at least we'll get a few days of less hot weather before Mama Nature turns the thermostat back up a bit here in early fall. Um, Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer will be keeping a close eye on storms today and tonight.
Nate. Unfortunately, I have some travel plans this afternoon and evening, as I alluded to earlier in the video, so we're not going to have a lot of video content heading through the afternoon and evening, at least until late this evening when I'm able to get into a hotel, but I will do my best to keep updates flowing on the community section of YouTube, along with the other social media channels using, well, internet on the plane, knock on what the internet actually works. Otherwise... You can keep an eye on the sky with the interactive weather radar in our free mobile app. We've got a couple radars in there. You could click the radar button for the radar in the app and the and more tab for zoom radar. We also have a live radar stream running on the YouTube channel you're watching this on. Uh, just search for Texas Weather Live. You'll find the YouTube stream pretty easily. Or you can just go to our website, texasstormchasers.com slash live. I may actually just pin it to the top of the homepage, too. We'll see. If so, you'll be able to find it in the app as well. Otherwise, we'll keep an eye on the sky. And again, it's going to be a stormy couple of days across the state. But you know what? That's what happens when we start transitioning into fall. As always, we'll keep an eye on things. Y'all have an amazing day, and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.